Yeah, buddy. Yeah, the footage is not pretty, I know. But I'm too excited to wait. Um, this is the E-U-S-O? E-Y-O-S-O? e u -so? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I would call it off-brand, I guess. Uh, K600 Vintage Retro Old School Keyboard. Um, yeah, so let me go ahead and open this thing up. Usually I do these uh, initial openings uh, kind of fast and quiet, and I just speed through them, but... You know, I want to see what's in here. I'm excited. I was going to wait till the next day, but got a little bit of time on my hands, so let me go ahead and do this. And maybe the reason why I'm talking through this is because this one is for me. I mean, all of my products that I buy are for me, but like this one's for me, for me. You know what I mean? Like, I wanted a new, well, I needed a new keyboard, and I was messing around, and saw retro keyboards and I'm like what what is a retro keyboard then I remember the old school keyboards that made that loud clickety clack sound which I can't stand but I like the way this thing looked and boom here we go oh, look at this, this is kind of cool oh man I hate that sound <laughs> I hate that sound but I mean, there's nothing to really show. It's a keyboard. It's USB. Yeah, I know I'm old school. USB. I know everybody's wireless and all fancy. I'm not worried about that. All I'm worried about is the clickety-clack sound of this keyboard. Man, let's go ahead and get into it. What's up everybody, it's Ahmed with A. Roberson Photo, A. Roberson Media, and today I'm coming to you with a short video, something new, just like you saw in the intro. This is something for me. This is my new keyboard. Where is it? Let me grab it. Oops, dropped the box, but that's okay. My new keyboard, retro keyboard. Look at these old school keys. Listen to that click. Yes, my old school keyboard. This, I mean, what more can I say about it? It's just an old school keyboard, right? Retro, retro style, retro clicking keys. Uh, can you see the color blue in there? These are the MX, what are they, Cherry MX keys, blue. So they have a louder clicky sound in comparison to the red, brown, or black keys. Matter of fact, let me grab the box. It is the E Uso, E Uso, I guess K600, and here we go. This is pretty uh, off-brand, I guess, but the on-brand <laughs> is the Azio, Azio, Azio. There we go. Hope you can see that, Azio. This is my older keyboard, regular. I want to say maybe it has the black keys under there or brown keys, but there's no way to tell unless I was to take it apart, which I'm not gonna do. But the reason why I replaced this is because one, I wanted something nice and cool for myself, but two, uh, some of my keys are starting to stick on this thing. I've had this thing for, I wanna say maybe four years. I don't know if that's a long lifespan or not. Uh, as far as I read, I don't know a whole lot about keyboards, but I just, I did some quick summary or quick research rather, just to see uh, what it is I could talk about in this. And from what I understand, basic keyboards like this, um, they have a click lifespan of, what is it, over 50 million clicks? Something like that. So that's a pretty good lifespan on there. Um, but the old school retro style, this style right here, these have 150 million uh, clicks uh, to register before it starts to die or act funny. So that's a good purchase for me, right? <coughs> 
excuse me. <laughs> That's uh, pretty good for me to have 150 million clicks. That means it's gonna last a long time. I mean, yeah, this thing did last uh, three years, which is, I, and I'm sure I didn't click over 50 million times, but maybe I did. But either way, my key started to stick a little bit, so I wanted to replace it. Um, keyboard was only 36 bucks, something like that from Amazon, $36 US. I'll put up a screenshot for you guys to see that. And um, it is off brand. The on brand, the ASIO brand, they make a retro keyboard just like that too. But that their retro keyboard was anywhere from 186 bucks or 196 bucks up to 230 bucks. And as much as I like the way their keyboards look er ergonomically and aesthetically and all that, I'm not going to pay 230 something bucks or 220 something bucks for a keyboard. I'm just not going to do it. Now, I only know so much about the ASIO brand and I don't know anything about the EOSO brand or EUSO brand. But when looking on Amazon, looking at the Amazon reviews, the ASIO brand had, I think, I want to say 411 uh, uh, views from Amazon or uh, reviews from Amazon. And it was like 4.5 stars where the EUSO brand had 430 something reviews and they were 4.5 stars just the same. And when I was looking at some of the negative comments on the ASIO brand, ASIO, ASIO brand, they were talking about the keys sticking and having a couple of defects where the keys didn't register. And it was similar um, negative results for the EUSO. So I figured instead of paying 200 and something bucks for a keyboard that's gonna have some mistakes just like the $36 keyboard did, why not just try the $36 keyboard and see if it works out? Plus, like I said, it had 430 something reviews versus 411 reviews. Don't know if those reviews are real or fake, but still, it had a lot of reviews to contend with as many reviews as the EUSO brand or as the ASIO brand had. Aside from the good looks of the EUSO brand, um, I like the, well, I do, but I don't like the sound of the keyboard. And I mean, I hate, I almost hate the loud clickety clack sound of this keyboard, but at the same time, I love it because it, it it's nostalgic, I guess, because most keyboards nowadays are made quiet like the ASIO keyboard that I just had, but the clickety clack sound of this, it's, it's like, for me, it's like, when somebody's clicking a pin, you hate that sound. When somebody's clicking a pin, it's so annoying, unless you do it yourself. So when I'm sitting somewhere in an office or something, and I hear this, ah, oh, it drives me nuts. But when I'm doing it, it doesn't matter, right? Because it's me doing it, it's me making a sound, and I'm just more tolerant of me as opposed to other people, I suppose, right? I know I'm not the only person that thinks that way. And if I am, you're lying. You're lying because you think the same way I do, right? A lot of reviews I read, a lot of people feel the way I do. Like they hate the clickety clack sound, but they also love the clickety clack sound. And more important than the clickety clack sound is the feel. It feels good. It has a lot of good uh, feedback to it. It's a good enough pressure to know. I mean, it's not like you're blankly just empty typing on the uh, ASIO keyboard because it doesn't have that kind of pressure feel. But this, it just has a different type of feel to it. I like it. Now, another thing I want to talk about really quick, they're both lighted keyboards because I tend to work in the dark sometimes, a lot of, I do a lot of Photoshop and I don't like light reflecting on my screen sometimes because it could mess up what I think I'm seeing. So I like to work in the dark and with my ASIO, it's a lighted keyboard, it comes uh, blue, red and lavender I want to say, whereas this one, it has a multitude of colors like a rainbow type of colors and I believe you can change the color pattern with the function buttons. Uh, on this keyboard, you hit like, uh, where's the FN button? Hit somewhere, oh, there it is. You hit the FN button, can you see that? You would hit the FN button and one of these up and down arrows here if you wanna change the lighting pattern. Um, chances are I'm not gonna be using the lighting pattern much. I mean, if I do, I'll just turn the light on or off and increase the intensity and lower the intensity of the light depending on how bright it is at night. Um, but a lot of gamers tend to use this keyboard, so I guess a good lighting pattern will be, will be good for gamers, but for me, not so much. I just needed to see in the dark if it's really, really late and I don't have any window light coming in and it's just super, super dark in my office. But otherwise, I mean, it is lighted. It is nice. Uh, like I said, I got the blue MX keys in there, which is cool. But I will say one thing I was disappointed about, I was actually supposed to get this keyboard a day earlier, but it was undeliverable because according to Amazon, uh, UPS damaged it and they didn't want to send me a damaged product that I have to send back so they just stopped the shipment and sent me another well when I opened this one brand new I noticed 
one of the feet is missing, right? So I'm like, dang it, I thought they replaced the bad one with a good one and they sent me one with both feet, but no. But when I look at my ASIO that I've had all these years, I, I wanted to make sure I wasn't act <laughs> overreacting and look what I found, bam. It's missing a foot just the same. There are different size feet, so I can't take this foot off of that and put it on a new one. But plus the way I mount my keyboard in my little slide out uh, desk drawer anyway, it doesn't matter about the feet, but it's just the principle, right? You know? Anyway, um, I've only had this keyboard for a day and I like it so far. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, these keyboards have what you call ghosting, whereas if you press multiple keys, it's not gonna register all the keys, whereas the new, the EOSO, the old retro type, or EUSO, I hope I'm pronouncing that right either way, but those, they have the anti-ghosting to where if you press it, press multiple keys at once, it should register all the keys. So I did a quick test on that to see, and it didn't register all the keys perfectly, but it did pick up more keys than when I pressed multiple keys on this keyboard here. So, not gonna toss it like I normally toss stuff, but because I might keep it for a backup. You know, you never know. I got some old other keyboards, but out of all my keyboards that I have, I kind of like this one better than all the other ones, even though the keys are sticking. But anyway, just to uh, summarize really quick, so far so good on the uh, EUSO keyboard. It's plug and play, USB. Just plug it into my computer. It registers immediately. No drivers to be installed, nothing like that. It just goes immediately. And I'll give you some uh, little sound recordings re real quick just so you can see what it sounds like in comparison from the old retro to the ASIO new style softer keys. See what you guys think. Anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a quick review on a uh, purchase that I made for myself this time. I mean, again, uh, everything that I buy is for myself, but this one was strictly for me. You know, I just wanted a new keyboard for myself. So hopefully my excitement about the keyboard, the keyboard that I showed you, hope, hopefully it helped you guys make an informed decision on if you wanted to buy one or not. And, uh, oh, I do have a, a cooking channel for some of you guys have uh, one, gone over there to my other channel to see. It's called I Really Can Cook. I'll put a link up in the description for that as well. Check it out. You know, it's just me making regular household entrees, making them better, making them epic like I like to do. Um, hopefully you checked it out. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you subscribe and you'll come back and see more of my videos and bounce back between my tech channel here and my cooking channel over there. So this is Ahmed with A. Roberson Photo. I'll see you guys in the next video.